It's the gear tester here and welcome to my first range report on the Smith & Wesson model 640. The Smith & Wesson model 640 is a stainless steel revolver with a 2 inch barrel. It holds 5 rounds in its cylinder. You can fire through this gun either full 357 Magnum power loads or 38 Special, depending on what you choose to fire out of the gun. Today, I'm going to be using a Galco horsehide pocket holster along with some quick strips, as well as one five-round speed loader. These additional items will prove useful as I run the drills that I'll be performing for you today in this video. First thing right out of the gate here, I managed to miss the first two shots, which was unfortunate. It left me at a disadvantage because this is a five shot snub nose revolver and I just expended four rounds. So I chose to use a technique that was taught in the 60s, 70s, maybe even the 80s, and that was shoot two, load two, in essence. So I've shot four, so what I'm going to do is I open the revolver cylinder up and I pull out four of the four spent rounds, and then I simply load four more rounds in, keeping the one bullet that was already in the cylinder ready to go. Continue to walk along here looking for my next target. Managed to get both those on target, so I've got three bullets left in my gun. Continue to walk along here. I do the shoot two and then I load two. So I get my little quick strip back out and I load the gun back up and top it off. So that means I've got five rounds back in the cylinder ready to go. I decide that I'm going to kneel down here and shoot. I probably should have gotten up closer here because I managed to do some missing. I think I got, yeah, I got two of those hits on that six inch shoot and see target. Ran up close and thought I was gonna smoke this one with the last two rounds and I managed to completely miss. So instead of a quick strip, I decided to do the speed loader because that's faster and the gun is completely empty and I managed to get both those on the target. Here's a little data point about shooting the 640 or other similar J-frame snubbies that don't have a hammer, okay, with this configuration. You can see there that I cut my hand pretty decently from the recoil, and that's because I'm holding the gun very high up. I wish somebody would manufacture a grip that moved these portions up and covered this sharp edge there and there so that as the gun recoiled, you can see right there is where it's catching my hand and cutting my hand open. And I notice some pain as I'm shooting, but then here you go, I'm looking at it and saying, wow, that's that's not good. Just because I managed to cut my hand open there on that edge does not mean that the 640 is not a good revolver. It just means I need a different grip on that gun. I thought I'd engage in a little bit of an unfair comparison. I want to compare the Smith & Wesson Model 640 to a Glock 19. Now you may think, wow, that's not at all comparable in any way, but actually the Glock 19 unloaded weighs 23.63 ounces and the Smith & Wesson model 640, the one I have here before you today, weighs in at 22.1 ounces. So in terms of weight, they're actually quite close together. The Glock 19 fully loaded weighs 30 ounces, but that's with 15 rounds of ammunition in the gun. And the 640 fully loaded weighs around 25, 26 ounces. So actually there's very comparable in terms of weight. I will admit that the Smith & Wesson model 640 more easily fits inside a pocket, but it's more organic in nature. I would never use the Glock 19 as a pocket pistol. And so the 640 is more compact, but is very similar in terms of weight. All right, guys, just finished that run here with my Glock 19. All those targets, two hits, just like I did with my Snubby. But you saw how much faster this was. And it was faster because I didn't have to stop and reload. I didn't have to worry about plucking two rounds out and putting two more in. I thought I'd share with you how I reload revolvers and some of the steps and techniques I use to increase consistency and reliability and repeatability when I'm reloading my revolver. When it comes to reloading little snubby revolvers, you need to be more intentional with lar than with larger revolvers. And there's a couple reasons for that. And we'll discuss those here in just a second. One thing before you, before you start trying to reload your revolver is you need to have set yourself up for success. With semi-automatic handguns, we tend to, if you're right-handed, 
we tend to use our left hand to bring in a fresh magazine. So we're dropping the mag here, we're bringing a fresh magazine up, rack the slide, or if the slide is in lock back, as you do that, there you go, you, you drive it home with the slide release. Either one of those options are viable. I choose to run the, run the slide because I think that that's the best way of doing it. But the point is, is your reloads are in your left hand, so it makes sense to have your reloads on the left hand side of your body with a semi-automatic handgun if you're right-handed. Obviously, it would be reversed if you're left-handed. So, gun runs empty, drop the mag, new mag in, rack the slide, and I'm back in the fight. Revolvers are different. You're going to need to set up your reloads so that they are, if you're right-handed, so that they are on your right-hand side. I'm going to show you why that is here. So. Got already fired brass here in this revolver to simulate that I have just finished firing and now I have a bunch of empty brass in the gun. So get multiple shots on target or I miss and now it comes time for a reload. Click, the gun has just let me know. I probably don't have any more rounds in it. What I'm gonna do is I'm, gonna, I'm holding the gun in my right hand. I'm gonna transition the gun into my left hand and I'm gonna push this little latch forward with a J-frame snubby from Smith & Wesson. There's other revolvers maybe you have to push down or do different things. But in this case, because this is a sn snubby revolver from Smith & Wesson, Smith & Wesson's cylinder release button pushes forward. So I'm gonna push that forward as I'm transferring the revolver into my left hand. I'm gonna use these two fingers to push the cylinder open and I'm gonna leave my fingers there keeping the cylinder open. If you try and do this, the cylinder can go back in, pop around, move around, it's gonna be hard to reload. So, the gun goes click. I'm gonna to start to transfer the gun into my left hand. I'm going to push down on the cylinder release. I'm gonna pop the cylinder out with these two fingers there. And I'm gonna make sure to keep them pressed against the frame of the gun right here. This is the little forcing cone and it gets hot if you've been shooting a lot. So if you run your hands up there, oh, you might drop your gun because it's gonna hurt you, it's gonna burn you. So pop it open with these two fingers, keep them against the frame of the gun, the back of the frame of the gun, and now I'm gonna invert the revolver. Some of the rounds may fall out. You can see some of these rounds, when you, when you discharge them, they fire form to the cylinder, so you're gonna need to kick them out. Okay, so they, some of them have fallen out, some of them won't. Then I bring my right hand up and I hit this little um, rod there twice. Now you could, I guess, do it with your thumb there, but I choose to use my palm like this and I do it twice because these snubby revolvers have a very short little ejection rod. And what that means is they don't eject the casing all the way out. This is 38 Special. That, that rod limits how far I can kick them out. So they don't just eject straight out of the gun. Whereas with larger revolvers, like my Smith & Wesson 686P, it has a significantly longer ejection rod, so I can just go whoop, and the rounds are out. Because in this case, you can see, it actually lifts them all the way out. It gets them to the end of the brass and can, can kick them out. With the snubbies, that's not the case, so you have to be more intentional. So as just a rule of thumb, I just always open the latch, transfer the gun to my left hand, kick the cylinder open, come up here, and I do this twice, okay? The reason I choose to hit this ejection rod twice, okay, is because I'm hoping that if a round has gotten uh, stuck in the chamber, particularly with the snubby revolvers, that gravity and the vibration of my hand hitting the rod or in, in the firearm two or three times will knock loose any rounds. So as you use your gun, you'll know, do, does it basically always two hits get it, or does doing it three times mean that you can make sure that the gun is more reliable and gets the empty casings out of the gun consistent, consistently? Left hand, kick the cylinder open, come up here, and I do this twice, okay? So I've inverted the gun down so the rounds can fall, fall out. Now I tip the gun barrel downward, and in this case, I'm gonna be using a speed loader. I take the speed loader, I insert it into the cylinder, and then I pull forward, or twist, or push forward, depending on the kind of speed loader you have. That kicks itself off to the side, and now I'm ready to fire the firearm again. So that's how I use the little speed loaders, right? And you're gonna to need to know precisely, depending on the make and model, and the, the manufacturer, how your speed loaders operate. I, I tend to not trust speed loaders that much because they hold the rounds secure, but then if you just twist this, they fall right out. And 
there's a reason why police officers who carried speed loaders carried back in the 60s and 70s, why they carried uh, them in pouches that protected them, little leather pouches that covered them so that you couldn't accidentally hit that knob. For uh, modern individuals who are concealed carrying, what I fear is that, and I've had this happen in, to myself, is you're carrying these in your pocket, you stick your hand in your pocket, maybe you play with them and boop, and all of a sudden you've just got loose rounds in your pocket. So they are faster. Undoubtedly speed loaders are faster. This revolver actually is cut to allow clips that go in that hold the rounds in and, and put all five rounds in and then come out with them. But those are very chintzy and I find break easily. So I haven't used those. My preference is to reload my revolvers with this speed strip or quick strip. There's a couple different companies that make these. Just a little rubber uh, strip that holds the rounds. And so I would, again, you're gonna need to have this available to your right hand. It shouldn't be in your left hand pocket. You won't be able to get it out. So you fire your revolver, last couple shots in your revolver, you get a click. We're going to push the cylinder latch forward. We're gonna get that cylinder out of the gun, keep our fingers against the back frame of the revolver so we don't burn ourselves. Bring our right hand up once, twice. Now tip the gun barrel down. And now we're gonna keep the cylinder open with either those my thumb or those fingers. And I'm going to insert rounds and then I'm gonna twirl the cylinder so that it makes my job easier. Twirl the cylinder, make my job easier. And then I am up and ready to fight. One thing you need to be aware of is if you hit this at an angle or you get a little too vigorous with it, you can bend this rod. So this is a delicate piece of equipment that is maybe particularly true with these ones that are longer. Maybe that's one negative is it would be easy to have my hand come in sideways and just bend that and now your gun is not going to lock up. It's not going to work. Okay, that would be a problem. So you need to be intentional and to some degree gentle as you come to get these rounds out of the gun. That's why I use my open palm. That's why some people prefer to use their thumb like this. They feel that it's less violent. Uh, with these shorter rods on the snub noses, I, snub nose revolvers, I think you're actually less likely to bend them, but you still need to be careful. So I come up and over with the palm of my hand and allow the barrel of the gun to kind of guide my hand down once, twice, maybe three times. Now turn the gun with barrel down and start the work on it, getting it reloaded. So that's how I use both quick strips and speed loaders. If you like this video, I would encourage you to subscribe to my channel and my second range report on the Smith & Wesson Model 640. I'll be running the 640 head-to-head -head versus my Glock 43, which is a subcompact pocket-sized pistol chambered in 9mm, and that's probably a fairer comparison. Thank you very much for your views and your subscriptions. I hope that you found this video useful and interesting. My goal here at the Gear Tester YouTube channel is to produce quality video reviews on the topics of shooting, camping, and survival gear.